founder. More podcast where we want you to know God more deeply. Find lasting freedom. Discover your destiny and make an eternal difference. Now. In making eternal difference. And you. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows who that woman is speaking. Of. I think her name is Kathy. Yeah, I, I don't know. She feels she sounds like a Kathy. She does sound like a Kathy. It's, it's, that sounds right. It's. Uh, I'm going with Linda. <clears throat> it's actually an AI. Listen, Linda. It's actually an AI Linda. robot that's speaking that. I oh, I thought it was your voice. Just what? <laughs> just like me sounding like that. Just hey, just come on. Done you know, in a different tone. And technology <laughs> today <laughs> is incredible. <laughs> Well, welcome to this week's podcast. Uh, do you ever wonder why? I mean, I, I oh, wonder I, why sometimes. Day. <laughs> some days I wonder <laughs> why. Uh, I listen to more podcasts. We wonder a lot. We wonder a lot. Well, I'll tell you more. I'll tell you why more. <laughs> it stands for maximizing opportunities for right now and eternity. So stop asking why you listen. Just never forget to listen and pass it on. <clears throat> well, where is my handy dandy paper today? I don't have one. Uh, well, this week's podcast episode is brought to you by Slipper Mops. Have you ha- do you have a household full of kids that are constantly running around that, uh, but not helping out with household chores and cleaning? Nope. Well, <laughs> I hope not. We do. We got a lot of questions then. Where are uh, they? <laughs> well, give them all Slipper Mops and give mom some me time. For only $12.79, make house chores fun again. Use promo code Mommy's Little Janitor. And save an additional penny only on Amazon. Ooh, a penny. My mom would have loved those instead yeah. of our rollerblades when I was a kid. Right, yeah. <laughs> we did that. We, we rollerbladed in the house on our hardwood floors. So, and she was not happy. I bet. Because we had just installed them, apparently. So now it's got a lot of dents in the wood. And no. No. Not too scratches. Bad. A lot of scratches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I did learn a handy dandy way of fixing that. Uh, I was watching a TikTok. Yeah. You know, TikTok. I know TikTok's of the devil, but I was watching a TikTok. What's up, China? And uh, yeah, China. <laughs> and uh, the using using a stain color, the same color as your floor. Yes. Covers up scratches really easy. Do it. Yeah. Well, uh, here with me, the only woman I know who can shop for groceries, clothes, and a new car, all while simultaneously negotiating world peace on her phone. <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> Pastor Amy. Thank you. And are you going to run for president this year, or are you planning on mm, waiting? Maybe president of a different country, but... Not not America. Venezuela? Nah. <laughs> yeah. I think you could take Trump. I really do. I think you oh, could. Oh, okay. I think you could. I don't have enough fans for that. In a fist fight, or... Well, I think maybe president. I think oh, she yeah, yeah. should do it. I mean, either way. In an arm I mean, wrestle. I think, you yeah. could, I think you could take Donald Trump in a fist fight. I know, she can, I know she can arm wrestle him. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the fun we do on missions trips. We have our arm wrestle guys <laughs> in other countries, and then she I makes think, them feel like little girls after she's done. I think that's how the president... Presidency should be decided. Right. Boxing match. <laughs> you know how many people would actually think that you're just pulling their leg, but that was actually true in Mexico. That was true in Mexico. Oh, that was not a joke. The more I you did know. arm wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that's going to stop her is osteoporosis. I mean, other than that, she's going to be. <laughs> I have osteoporosis. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I'm going to break my arm. Okay, the only man who can speak several languages and six of them, he invented himself, Mike Britton. Duh. So <laughs> you're doing this fine. That's more That's not even Russian. He's making. He's not. It's Ukrainian. He made it. Up. Oh, it's no, Ukrainian. Ukrainian. <laughs> oh, I see. I got it wrong. <laughs> no, what I was speaking was Russian, but I don't know if this is actual Russian accent. This is very confusing because every Eastern Bloc country sounds same. Right. <laughs> it is ridiculous. And every TV are you show Polish? with a Russian. Are yeah. you Russian? Are you Ukrainian? We don't know. You, well, Pretty it good. could be Arab too. I mean, you could be an Arab nation. Not like enough. <laughs> Oh, that's right. You got it in there. Yeah, I got it. And then me. I got nothing. Croatian. I'm just here. I'm always here. I'm just here. They they locked me in this room after the podcast and never let me out until next podcast. This I got room one for is you. Oh, yeah. Okay. What? And the man, the myth, the legend. Oh. Whose mm. head shines like the cr- top of the Chrysler building. Ooh. Pastor what? Alex Norton. <laughs> Woo! Is there such a thing as a Chrysler building anymore? I don't know. It was off of Annie. Yeah. I, mean, uh, I like musicals. Oh, thanks. Yeah. What was the Chrysler building? It wasn't Empire well, State Good building, morning, was it? Baltimore. I don't know, actually, <laughs> what it was. What was it? I don't know. What? If I our podcast listeners are listening to this podcast, uh, is the Chrysler building a real thing? I think so. Thought so. If not, I, my whole childhood is a lie. It, <laughs> it, was, it was a lie. 
I'll look it up. I don't even know. Oh, here's the. I mean, first, I thought the, you yeah. know, um, Sarah from yeah. The Land Before Time yeah. was spelled S A R A H or just S A R A. No. What was it, how's it spelled like? C E R A. Right. Like Triceratops. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't know that either. He was traumatized his entire life because of that. I was traumatized by that. I was traumatized by that movie in general. He's an adult talking about it. I know. I just found out about this like two days ago. First of all, okay, I have a a serious question. Okay. We may have an answer. I don't know if I can get it out. Why did you need to know how to spell Sarah's name? I From didn't. Land I found it on TikTok. Time. My friend sent it to me. <laughs> My friend sent it to me, and she's like, did you know this? I was like, no. But now I'm questioning everything about my life at this point. Right. Like, were you writing fan mail to her to make sure that it said Sarah, C-E-R-A? Is Listen, that f- what I do in my childhood <laughs> is none of your business. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, did you talk to your mom about that? Is that like phonetically responsible to use the C in that way? Yes. Actually, I knew that's the way that it was spelled because I was an adult when that <gasps> Do came you out. think. See, I wonder. Michael Sarah. Yeah. It's spelled the same way. Is it really? Mm-hmm. If my memory serves C E A R R C E R A. Yeah. If my if my memory serves correctly, yes. That is how it's spelled. Do you think he was named after tri- Triceratops? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> is he so awkward and just galumphing all around? I think that's so un, it's so irresponsible when you start using le- no, when you start <laughs> using letters like that that don't normally make phonetic sense. Have you seen the one where they do J K M N O P or something like that, and they said that's the name of a person, and then they're like, "How do you say this name? Say Looking it out loud." And they're they're trying to like phonetically sound it out, and they're like L because L is missing. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when those uh, nurses get on, it was on Instagram, they did it for a while, where they would share the names that came in for babies. Yes, crazy. Oh, that gosh. were birthed in their, their neonatal needle area. I haven't seen many of those anymore. Welcome to okay. Hazelnut. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to, to the, the world, Chrysler Hazelnuts. building. Okay, here it is. Um, it actually was the largest building before the completion of the Empire State Building. Ooh, really? Uh-huh. And it does it and still now exist? It's still. Now it's it was just the tallest. Now it's just and a vacant still. area. Homeless people mm. live in it, and they don't. Yeah. <laughs> but it's shiny. <laughs> yeah, it's super shiny. Probably not anymore. Well, I mean, the homeless do wash windows pretty well. So get up on top <laughs> of the building and make sure that bronze signs pretty well. Hey, so there you go. It's good. So it's real. Okay. The well, more you know. The mystery Thank solved. Uh, <laughs> it's not everything in my life is a lie. <laughs> Just Sarah. <laughs> Just Sarah. Shh, I know he's still, <laughs> he's still upset. Well, if you had a, if you have a daughter at some point, and you had the choice between Sarah, the normal spelling, or Sarah C E R A, which one are you going to use? S A R A I. Sarah I. Sarah I. Yeah. Okay. Like the Bible. Yeah. Not not Sarah S A R A H. No. No. Or S A R A. Or S A R A. No, just yeah. the I is silent. Oh, you're just yeah. going to put it on there and mess yeah. people up. Absolutely. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> Sarah E. Sarah. It's spelled like Sarah I, right. but it's Sarah. 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 The I is silent, just like Django. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, man, this is the phonetics. Hey, listen, are, listen. Yeah. Just because it's not phonetically correct, I mean, what do we live in? Yeah. What 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 do we, what, do we live in a town or a house? Oh. City. City. Oh. oh, I thought it was a game. <laughs> <laughs> I li- a trailer. I live a in a townhouse. We live in a townhouse. Okay. Woo. I was like, let's Where play the game. Going? I love this. I live in a train emotional roller coaster. <laughs> What's roller happening? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we have derailed. Well, while we're on this, I mean, how's your guys' week with the snowstorm from an epic well, storm? Snowstorm I bouquet. slept amazing. Did you? Oh, I slept we all did, day. And we didn't quite get all the snow that they originally called for. So, do you, do you think we? I mean, we're, well, we're, we're talking getting about getting more today, right? Yeah, we're, mm-hmm. we're getting it right now. Or we were. I mean, I don't ago. really like to fill my day with talking about snow because I really don't like snow. Snow, snow, snow. <gasps> when we will be long before. before. We'll all be there with snow. Okay, Mike, you're not allowed to come on anymore. Oh, he loves White Christmas. That's fantastic. Are oh. you playing the dial tone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we're good. We're getting a fax in for the tweets. Oh, oh. oh. 
Here oh. they come. Those tasty tweets are faxing in. All right, <laughs> people, let's get back to the tweets. Where is the fax machine? Over there. Amy, it's right there in front of your face. Oh, got it. You did, wink, you wink. It's practically, wink, wink. It's practically doing that dial tone right in your ear. <laughs> right. Practically fell over it coming in the building here. That's about right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so some tweets come in here. I'm going to take my glasses off because you can't see anything with that. With my bifles kicking in. Um, it says, can someone lend more podcasts to calendar? Uh, they were still in 2022, all of the last podcast. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Talk turning too, back the yeah. clock. Did you notice that? I yeah. did not. I did. That. I caught it right away. We were all saying like the like two years ago. We were like two, not 2000. We all. I said it. I think Mike might have said I it. Was it not. Point. I did. 2022. Um, and then when I got back in my office, I realized it's, it's 2024. 2024. Yeah. And you missed a whole year because you missed 2023. <laughs> <laughs> 2022 is a simpler time. Yeah, right. Uh, so we are sorry for that podcast. Uh, actually, yeah, this is, uh, this is 2024. So um, let's see. Uh, another one come in here. Thanks more podcast for making me double check if I slept through 2024. Nope, it's still this year. So right. they're listening to it and trying to figure this it's out. It's only just begun. <laughs> Uh, oh, that's a song by the Carpenters. Ooh, it's, it's only just begun. begun. <laughs> nice. Have you ever heard that before? I've not. Oh, You've everything's got a the, song. The Carpenters. Dude, do you know how much music there is out there to catch up on? Yeah, I know. Am I... For us, it's easy because... Young age. It's always going to be the 70s, 80s, and early 90s. I love those. And then you'll know. Yes. That's how we always do that, yeah. Anything after, like, 96, we're kind of like... But no grunge. No. Mm. No, no, no grunge. No. <laughs> No. You won't ever hear my wife singing Teen Spirit. She's not going to do it. Yeah. She just can't do it. No. Yeah. Or Rage Against the Machine. That's not going to ever come out of her mouth. Never? No. Weird. <laughs> Wait, what, what was that one song by that uh, one band that we, we just mentioned? Rage Against the what? Rage Against the... I'm trying to get her to say it, but I'm trying... Oh. I'm, my cleverness is I, out the window do, at this do point. Do you see that I've already forgotten what the name of it was? <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> stick. Rage Against the Machine. Oh. Because, you know, if we're going to mess with the phonetics. Or Machina. <coughs> Machina. Rage Against the Machina. <laughs> Doesn't sound exciting. Do you ever know? I mean, do you notice now, like, when I grew up, it, and all through the grade school period, you had to learn how to use phonetics. Now it's all memorization, right? Yeah, yep. Now. You have to memorize words. And so, like, when you give somebody now something to read, they they get lost. I do both. Yeah. I, I sound it out, and I was just like, okay, I know that word now. Yeah, so I'm going to use it. I bet Sarah threw you for a loop. Well, apparently. <laughs> With the C-E-R-A. You got to bring that up again, don't you, Amy? He was just about ready over it, you know? You know he, there's a knife in my back, out. and it keeps on twisting and twisting, and, and all of a sudden, lemon juice. He's, sound, ah! he's sounding out, so he had to sound out. If, people are, wondering why I'm, if people are wondering why I'm salty, it's because she keeps on pouring salt in the wound. Yes. So, and it ate a copious amount. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever, I mean, do you ever think people are calling her Kara? It's right. Sarah, yeah. Well, Mike well, no one ever like knew that it was spelled like that. <laughs> no, we it was all always knew. <laughs> it was only you that did. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this so much. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm laughing, but I'm dying on the inside. Exactly. Hey, you want some Kleenex? Over there? It's oh fun. my gosh! <laughs> all right, here's uh, the last tweet that came in here. Um, Legend says that Pastor Alex has converted more vegetarians with his blessed bacon than anyone else. Hallelujah. Converted? Converted, yeah. And it's kosher. Oh. Well, you know, it is a divine experience sometimes when you eat bacon. It's almost like a... Oh, you've converted vegetarians to It transports to you into bacon. another dimension. Well, both, yeah. They've ate the bacon, and they're like, I need to know who you serve. And then I tell them about Jesus. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, bacon. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. Awesome bacon. I didn't yep, get yep, it. Yep, okay. yep, yep. <laughs> Mike's doing the bacon dance. I mean, who wouldn't do a bacon dance? That was from Lion King. It was? Yeah. How old is that movie, though? 91. Yeah, come on. As as old as I am. Well, you forgot (laughs) me already, too? Oh. They talk about bacon on the Lion King? Yeah, when when Timon and Pumbaa and Simba go back to Pride Rock, and they're trying to distract the hyenas, and Timon's like, hey, what do you want me to do? Dress in drag and do a luau? Luau! Hey girl, and he does, and he does he's that little. Single. He's, he's, he's single, ready to mingle. We can give you his phone number. Uh, was, that, was that Simba with a C or an S? <laughs> I believe it's with fly. a PS. With a P. The P is silent, just like yeah. pterodactyl. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> he's quick. Oh, we'll take an ID break. We'll be right back. It's the first time everyone's ever said that about me. <laughs> 
You're listening to the More Podcast with Pastor Gary and Pastor Alex and maybe some other high caffeinated hosts. Coffee's taking in, y'all. <laughs> Run that caffeine train. Choo choo. I think the only one's not is Amy. What do you got in there? Just water. Yeah, I'm never caffeinated. Really? No, hardly ever. Never, never known. Oh, Jesus, that's right. Yeah, I only ever have like maybe a cup of coffee once a week. Really? Yeah. Really? You don't ever sneak any like, or, when I'm not around? Are you no. Okay? Like I just I don't know. It doesn't do anything for me. Like, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> How can you do well, you, st- you, you two still have your eyes closed. You're both like, I'm sound asleep, and you're both <laughs> drinking energy stuff. <laughs> That's just my natural state. <laughs> right. I'm waking up. I'm waking up. All right. Let's talk about the Detroit Lions. Well, the Detroit Lions. That's so good. I like that. Thank you. What was that? <laughs> I don't know what it was. <laughs> it was the lion. <laughs> that was a. That was a. <laughs> Sound like an ocelot. <laughs> Ceratop. Oh, we're back to Sarah. Sweet baby Jesus. <laughs> Come us down upon thine servant and save me. Uh, the Detroit Lions capped their 2023 regular season with a fairly comfortable win over the Minnesota Vikings, 30 to 20, to push their win total to a franchise tying mark of 12. Mm. It wasn't the prettiest of games for the Lions with uh, some unusually poor performances in areas of typical strength like the running game. However, Detroit's biggest playmakers did enough to carry them to this two-score win and we're all happy for it, which it doesn't really do much for them. Not that much. Yeah, just in your face. Vikings, you're done. Yeah, you don't don't have a chance now. Other than that, um, you don't don't have a chance. Uh, No chance. did Did anybody see the game? I did not. I mean, I don't know why you're asking me. Yeah. Have you ever heard of acting, Amy? Have you ever heard? Uh, <laughs> it was the best game ever. Have you ever heard of Typically, acting? Typically, I don't watch it. Really? No. I mean, I might catch a Did you watch here, Christmas Hallmark again. movies again? <laughs> yes. That is my... <laughs> They're still go-to. on TV. I know. They're on all the time. That makes me sad. Not all the time. I mean, usually they'll take them off after a certain time, and then you... They have a season where they take a break from Christmas movies and go to regular ones. Yeah. And then it's they usually bring from, like, March 1st until March 3rd. Well, I think we we should probably... <laughs> <laughs> we should probably call an expert, Neil, yes. Neil Britton, and see... Oh, I got him on speed dial. He's probably... <laughs> Number you should, two, <laughs> you should, he's not the number one. Yeah, give him a, give him a call, Mike. Let's see. Let's find out when uh, oh, when the uh, Christmas. Although, movie. he cheats. He streams his. Oh, does he? He streams his. Let's see if yeah. he knows the answer, though. We might need to know this. True. I don't know. Try to get him on the phone if we got a chance here. Uh, yeah. Okay, so the Detroit Lions are going to be making it back here to uh, you know eventually we're going to be playing the Rams on Sunday, uh, and uh, that's a big game because you got Stafford, who used to be a former quarterback for the Detroit Lions. Yes. He's actually been pretty nice. Some of the things he's been saying about the lines have been really nice. Yeah, but isn't that backhand compliment kind of nice? Yeah, it's, yeah. It's like, yeah, they're doing good. But, you know, his mm. wife was in a picture wearing a, De- <laughs> yeah, his wife wearing a Detroit Lions shirt, and she's like, I'm rooting for you guys, too. Oh. And I guess a lot of the fans are like, don't. Mm. It's kind of like, you That's know. That's weird. It's kind of like the t- t- thing with uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Yeah. She's an Eagles fan. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Because she's dating a chief, so now all of a sudden she's yeah. a Chiefs fan. Oh my gosh! I think the fair weather the camera is on Taylor Swift more often than not in those games. <clears throat> Who was it? Joe Coy? Was Taylor doing Joe Coy at oh, the uh, yeah. Golden Globes. Yeah, said that <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs game had more glamour shots of Taylor Swift than the Golden Globes did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, probably ah, true. <laughs> and she looked peeved. A peeved, she upset. Looked peeved. Yeah, that she's like. Oh. If you can not tell my face is contorted with rage. I did see that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was good. That's called acting. It, it is, it is. <laughs> it's acting, Amy. Acting. I'm a truth teller. Yeah. We'll try to, you know. Not an actor. Do a little improv every now and then. <laughs> it's okay. Improv. 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 <laughs> I'll take an ID break. Bear back. There's more to say. Get your feet moving. Get up from your office desk. Every time. Jiggling it. Jiggling yes. it. Yes, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. You're on the more podcast. We'll be right back. Hey, 
And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> the workout coach in India. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. In where? India. 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 Yeah, I think so. Oh, well, what do you, you think? come again? I don't know. What, what country do you think he's in? Yeah, probably Trinidad. Oh, yeah, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> so random. How is that random? You just pick something out of the air. Uh, that's it's uh, in the Caribbean. Bangladesh. <laughs> that's a Bangladesh guy. No, that sure. is not a Bangladesh. Okay. <laughs> Don't that's even think good. about it. Thank you very much. All of my accents just sound southern. Say something about Slurpees. Oh. Hey, listen, my big up Slurpees are the best. <laughs> Very good. No, say no wheeze in the juice. No, why? Stop yeah. squeezing the juice. No, he says it. No, he says it on uh, Encino Man. You remember that? No. Oh and and he goes, don't I stop wheezing the juice. Cells on that movie. Yeah. Stop wheezing the juice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I feel like you're making fun of me. No, no, not <laughs> at all. No, not at all. Not <laughs> at all. Yeah, and they're all they're all American names. My name's Dave. Oh, okay. oh sure. Yeah. Story. Yeah. I was up in Iron Mountain. Up in the UP. Yeah. And I was traveling for work and we stopped at a Super 8 motel. Yeah. This is the Christian version of it, right? <laughs> there is no other version of oh, it. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. <laughs> what? Here we go. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's Super 8. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so we was like, we're going to stop for the night and then we're going to get some food and then crash. And I was like, okay. And we go inside to the lobby to, you know, do the information and all that. And behind yeah. the desk is a bona fide Indian man. Yeah. From from sweet, India. Sweet, yes. We're from, not talking like, Native from, Americans. Yeah. No. Yeah. And. <laughs> no, it's not racist. <laughs> so we go in there and he's like, he sounds like he's from India, like from the continent. Yeah. And the accent and everything. And he's taking our information. And he's a super sweet guy. Really cool dude. And then he had a phone holster. And I saw his name badge. I was like, wait, what does that say? And then, because I didn't notice it before as I was filling out the information, <laughs> gets a phone call and then he answers it. Hello, this is Kevin. Thanks for the call. I, knew it was Kevin. I was like, I what? No, 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 it's not Kevin. No, it's, <laughs> it's not, not Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> you stop. Where did you, <laughs> you get that name stop. tag? Kevin, come on. Kevin. It's like that one Geico commercial. Hello, this is Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, gosh. You're working out the sinuses. Uh-huh. Uh, we got some more tweets in here. Uh, well, the fact that we put it on mute so you can't. Yeah. Oh, there oh. it is. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pastor Gary's woodworking skills are so good. Uh, trees volunteer to be his next project. Hashtag, how do I get a bowl? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. People saw what he gave that one Sunday oh, for I the winners. Oh, I bet they did. Yeah, that and was. Oh, I bet they did. Those were high class gifts. Somebody wants a bowl. <laughs> oh yeah. What was that one he had? Uh, it was like a platter thing or a plate. It's kind of yellowish wood. Oh, I forgot what kind of tree that was. Bubblegum tree. <laughs> no, but it was very yellow. Someone yeah. gave him that. Wood. It was really oh, cool. citrus. <laughs> no. Nope. That's never one of the orange a, trees. It hey. was a lemon tree. If it was a yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, he makes uh, bowls and stuff out of like any any wood, but he's got yeah. certain woods that he likes to use because they're so cool yeah. when you look at them. Yeah, he's he's got a gift for that. He did he did say that uh, the last week, but I can't remember what 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 the name of the wood was called. Yeah, it's bugging me now. He's yeah. like a tree expert now. He is. Now he's looking for certain types of grains and woods and stuff. Mm-hmm. He's a wood expert. Uh, here's another one. Square idea for more podcast bingo. Uh, here's the square they want to put in there. Pastor forgets where he was going. Happens more often than you think. You think it would be a good square on the podcast bingo that we're talking about oh mm. yeah yeah we're thinking about doing it yeah, yeah, you know yeah. during sunday mm-hmm. that we talked about that last week i don't know if pastor gary's told you in on the idea yet but we're working on him we're gonna work on it <laughs> and you just kind of like you play bingo while he's <laughs> while he's preaching while he's preaching but it's supposed to help people engage more in the sermon because they're oh. here so what do they yell when they get a bingo amen i mean that's probably the best word to that's all you have to do is, yeah yeah something that you know would go good with a sermon yeah. i see so it's going to be in a random spot, you uh, know? So, yeah, you don't want to be saying amen in the spot where Pastor Gary is telling a very sad story or something. Then you're like, amen. Amen. Uh, that's good. Yeah. So good. And then uh, the dog died. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> I got it. Yeah. I'm a winner. <laughs> I'm a winner. <laughs> no. So, yeah, we're working on that. So somebody's writing a we're possible still square. On kings. Right. Yeah. Just like with yeah. any good idea. That's a good right. square for it. Yeah. Um, oh, here's another one. Uh, make a square for when the communion elements are like opening a puzzle box. Mm. Mm. I mean, how many of us know what that's like, right? With the communion cups that we have? Mm-hmm. Some of them 
are pretty normal. But then we have that one where the lip is almost like the the opening part of it. And so oh. you're sitting there fighting, trying to get the lip to come up the whole time to get into the. I just think and then it's you funny. ask your wife to use her nail and just poke a hole in top of it. <laughs> <laughs> save your save your straws from your box juices. <laughs> Give me your Capri Sun, kid. <laughs> love it when they say, okay, take the cracker out and then, or the wafer, and then you open that up and then they say, turn it over. Yeah. That's really important. Turn it over before you open it. Well, the because juice. we had some problems the first time we started using those. People were like, <laughs> is that what all those spots in the carpet are for? <laughs> yeah, right. Walking out with juice stains on well, them. I'm glad it was then. Instead of- <laughs> I'm just saying. You never know. You never know. True. Yeah. But uh, so these things are actually like little puzzles when you're trying to take them open, especially when, you know, like sometimes uh, Pastor Matt, when he's doing the communion, he doesn't like officially say, okay, and now get your bread element or cracker element out. He doesn't always say that. He just like going into it. So you kind of assume like we're doing the cracker than the juice. So sometimes you're kind of like fumbling with it, trying to get it to work and you get kind of lost. And then everybody's already done doing communion. You're over there trying to it's get your communion. Right. Yeah. Uh, so those are some things. I think this, I honestly think this podcast trivia or uh, podcast uh, bingo? bingo thing would be a good idea. Oh, yeah, be a good I idea. really do. I mean, if we can get them to, if we can get them to if say we yes get, on that. If we can get on the video right. of the service. Yeah. Somehow in the background. Right. The interface, interlay. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Have the squares. Yeah. <laughs> Next to Kino. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this announcement was sponsored by Ottawa Casinos. Or Dewa, or how do you say that? Is it Ottawa or Odawa? Odawa. Odawa. That's I think I think, say, that's, yeah. I think that's how I say it. Yeah, I don't want to be disrespectful. Yeah, but Mike, what? We're getting a phone call from them. You guys don't know how to say our name. Hey, how are you? Yeah, I don't think that's how they talk. Oh, they don't. <laughs> I don't think so. That just are they like Canadian there, like but Southern or something? <laughs> Everybody in my world, Southern. It is in mine too. Yeah, I don't really have good accents. I don't either. <laughs> It's a shame. If Jesus, the redneck Bible, Jesus was uh, from the South. That's what it sounded like. In yeah. my head, everybody yeah. sounds like the chipmunks. Oh, oh. <laughs> we we do have counsel and retainer here at the right. church. We can There's get a you a lot going on up there. <laughs> you guys sound funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's take an ID break. We're back. Woo-hoo. We want you to know God more deeply. Find lasting freedom, discover your destiny, and make an eternal difference. More podcasts. More podcasts. Gardy from Star Trek. Yeah, aren't you? I'm like a the You're Jordy. I, I am Jordy, but I'm like also the weird child of Jordy from Star Trek, LeVar Burton. Love yeah, what's up? Yeah. And also Princess Leia. <laughs> <laughs> I reverse Princess Leia. And you know he did Reading Rainbow. Yes, I do. And this is Lamar Burton. Oh, I, I, that, that, that's one of the first Rainbow. things. That's one of the first things I saw on after Star Trek. Yeah, I, I was like Star Trek. Ooh, cool. Yeah, what? <gasps> that's the dude from Star Trek. <laughs> the first time you're going, he actually can see. He actually is not. Blind. He has eyes. <laughs> What happened to his visor? <laughs> I, I don't want to, you know, cause anybody any undue pain and suffering on this, but, you know, what he was wearing across his eyes was a banana comb from the 80s. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> How do you know what a banana comb is? That is hilarious, Amy, actually. I know what a banana comb is. Did All you right, ever wear I'm going to go no. home and no. cry in the corner. I'm, yeah. See ya. <laughs> do you know what a banana comb is? Comb that's a banana? I don't know. Yeah. Amy, explain, since you were a previous hairstylist. Uh, uh, so it's... A comb that goes in your hair that has teeth on both sides. Oh, yeah. And then you would like fling it so your hair looked like it was in a mohawk when you got done. I mean, I never saw any really good styles with Did them. Did Cindy Lauper do that? Oh, I'm oh, sure. sure, yeah. Yeah, probably sure, yeah. But I mean, come on. I mean, you've got a budget of millions of dollars. And so you come up with an idea of how to make the guy look blind in the future. True. And we, we make a banana comb. Somebody's like, well, it's got hey. like cool running lights across <laughs> his visor too. So there's that. <laughs> Let me take that from you and I'm going to use it in a yeah. mo- in the show. <laughs> it's true. Some girl sacrificed her banana comb for the sake of the show. Yep. Yeah. Listen, this will look good. She's a real sp- right. MVP. <laughs> She's the MVP. She's the like, MVP. We'll spray it silver and then they'll never know. They'll never know. Cheap prop. <laughs> Cheap they'll never know. You can buy those at the dollar store. Out of your plain cents. sight, the yeah. banana comb. <laughs> the banana comb. Yeah. It's the future eyes. 
Uh, okay, so right. uh, I wanted to uh, look at some of the head-scratching quotes that came out in 2023 Ugh. that, uh, you know, I, I've heard, and then I wonder, what does that mean? Uh, maybe you have Biden's two. Biden's good president. <laughs> what? Biden's a good president. I heard that one. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. That's a head-scratcher. That's a, yeah. now, well, now our show's getting kicked <laughs> off the air. <laughs> we we had a podcast, and now it no longer. Uh <laughs> Michael's like <laughs> he says he said that out loud. That was a head scratcher. <laughs> like so much, <laughs> like so much of the last couple of years. Uh, I wonder sometimes. We might my have to edit down some of this hurt. out. We're laughing. Oh so hard. no! Oh no! We oh not. my gosh! No, we're laughing so hard. We might have to edit some of that. My flat abdominals hurt now. Yeah, we never will. Never. Um, okay, so here are some of the the quotes. That uh, people might have used around you, maybe you've heard it before, and uh, you're wondering what does that mean. We're going to try to help help solve that for you. I Excellent. think we have. I think we have a group of good brains. We definitely here. have a good meeting of the minds. Yeah, right the here. words of uh, the most iconic words of Bill and Ted. Most yeah. excellent. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, here's the first one. Uh, I'm sure this is pretty popular where you you uh, hang out. Uh, he's about as sharp as a marble. Yep, you've heard that one. Yeah, I've heard that one. Now, what do you think that? <laughs> I have never heard that. It wasn't said to me. Though. It, was, it was not said to me, so I just want to make that perfectly clear. My mom said that the other day to me. I was like, what does that mean? My, my grandmama gave me the best compliment. She said I'm as sharp as a marble. I'm like, hey, grandma. Mike's like, yep, I've heard that. Yeah. Uh, yep. That does- <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, that's a head scratcher. I yeah. mean, because obviously the marble's not very sharp. Obviously, <laughs> you're like obvious. I don't want to state the obvious uh, nature of this question. There's this uh, comment, but yeah, the okay. not yeah, sharp. Yeah, yeah. 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 Next. Uh, okay, the next one is not taking risk is life's biggest gamble. Oh yeah. Huh. Um, that's not like a head Gen scratcher. Z thing to say. Yeah. That's a, well, it I mean, kind of makes sense, but it's like. Mm, Irritates me for some reason. Right. It, <laughs> <laughs> it makes you scratch your head. Could we say? Could we say that life is kind of a gamble? Right. It is. Yeah, it is. And well, then I mean, you take risks. You're, yeah. You're taking a gamble every time you get out of bed. Right. To be perfectly honest. So life is always a risk. I, I don't know. It is. Yeah. Well, you got to know when to hold them. No one to, to hold them. them. No one to walk away. And no one to run. <laughs> And you never count your money. That was Mr. Any Rogers. When you're sitting at the table. Stay silent. (laughs) Stay silent. (laughs) Any Rogers. Will anybody understand today's podcast? (laughs) Probably not. Probably not. But, you know. Uh, (laughs) I'll get a quick phone call from Pastor Gary. Uh, We need to talk about the podcast. (laughs) Michael's not loud back. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not loud back. We're going with a whole new staff on this one. We need a new staff. (laughs) We need new hosts. So from now on until Pastor Gary finds a new host and uh, whatever I am. (laughs) (laughs) You're the hype girl. Whoa. Oh, yeah. He's a hype girl. He's a hype girl. Man. No, that's a good position. That's a good position. It's like a cheerleader. Girl? Only without the costume. Well, hype boy. Okay, hype. Hype man. Hype man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. What, do you think he was called a hype girl in the black eyed peas, that guy with the megaphone? <laughs> <laughs> he was just a hype man. He was just called hyper. That's all. He was. Hype man. That's hype probably man. better. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hype man. Okay. Yes. He's still single. So He's men. still single, ladies. He's still single. He's still single. Yeah. All the single ladies. All the single ladies. <laughs> if you're looking, looking for your own personal hype man, Mike could be that for you. Hey, yeah. I got you. <laughs> Finger guns. Uh, okay, here's another one. It's always darkest before it's pitch black. Huh. That's it makes sense, but it's that one seems does like it make it's sense? Very, it, it makes mine? sense, but it's so stupid. Isn't isn't it dark? After. Yeah, it's always dark. I mean it's dark. Say say repeat. It doesn't it again. matter. Dark is dark, right? It's, it's dark, always, but it got darker. It's wow. always darkest before it's dark. No, it's, yeah, it's always so, it's always dark before it's pitch dark. <laughs> it's always dark before it's pitch black. That's the phrase. Okay. That's yeah. A, nah. No. Well, it okay. makes sense well, because it's always dark. That. Right. You can't say nah because people are using these and they're. I just hey, look at that wall. See, it's dark, then it's pitch black. Yeah. Huh. I just pointed out a square. Uh, I, a sound square. It hurts right. my brain. I'm just here to blow your mind right now. That's basically all I'm here. I don't for. know if it's doing that, but no. Okay. Huh. Uh, here's another one. I adore spontaneity as long as it's carefully planned. You what? I, <laughs> I adore spontaneity as long as it's carefully I, planned. How long that took me? And it uh, only took me like two seconds. But I was like, no, it shouldn't take you that long. <laughs> 
<laughs> it should not have taken me that long. Have another sip of your coffee there. Yeah. It's empty. Hmm. All I got uh, is ginger ale. Hashtag go Verners. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag sit gang. <laughs> The podcast is sponsored by Verners. All right, here's another one. If you don't want to be mistaken for a doormat, get off the floor. Uh, that oh. one makes sense, I think. That one I could use. Mm. That sounds like a Dr. Phil phrase. If you don't want to be a doormat, get on the floor. No? True. Yeah? I mean, that's something we could use. It's okay. All right, here's another one. It's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better. You know it's cold outside when you go outside and it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you really read that? Yeah. That's no good. That, that, you know it's cold outside when you go outside and it's cold. Yeah. This is what I like to ask my husband in the mornings. So he goes to put the dogs outside yeah. and he comes back in. He has to open the door. Right. right. So he does feel it. And I always right. am like, is it really cold out today? He's like, I have no idea. I didn't go outside. <sighs> right. You opened the back door. No, you, you don't get it. There's like a, between the inside of the house and the outside, there's like a force field that keeps the temperature medium. Yeah. <laughs> medium. Yeah. It's not like it's. Like all of a sudden, bam! I'm like it, it, confronted it, with freezing we don't cold have weather. An it's awning. like the um, decompression unit yeah. in, inside a space station. Right. You don't go from zero gravity to full oxygen. Right. You got to decompress the gravity or right. the zero gravity. <laughs> Thank you. This is this is good. <laughs> it's good information. You don't just go. Right. Oh no! Vacuum to. Well, the then if no. that's the there's case, like a decompression line. If that's the case, then yeah. when we leave the door open and you're like, shut the door, you're letting all the heat out. How that's does because that make sense? wind comes in. Yes. See, get it? Yeah. that's how you should know if it's cold or warm. No, not I'm not standing there that long. <laughs> I'm you like, think he's standing in front of it? <laughs> I'm like, dog, go outside. Let's get out of here. All right, here's another one. I know you believe you understand what I said, but I am not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. Makes sense. That's a good one. I mean, it does make sense, but it hurts my head thinking about it. It reminds me of Jack Sparrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, right. it does, yeah. That's totally. one of his quotes, yeah. Um, this is no, this is the last one. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I can't see. No, oh, it's oh, sad, but it's true. That's brilliant. This is deep, actually. I wish that I could see with my eyes one. closed. Right. I, you know, I feel like there's a sermon from that. You could it's just about as deep that. as a thimble. <laughs> right. I'm thimble. well, thimble. If, if I'm like a ninja, you know, not a true. big deal. True. Tansy, t- 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 I don't think you're like a ninja. What? Amy. I think that would be. A hey, I wanna be ninja. Why would I not be a ninja, Amy? I mean, do we need to list the ways? Do we, that's kind of. <laughs> or should we just let it be? First of all, <laughs> just let it be. First that's of all, he's our dynamic. Let so, it be. Thank you. And Perfect. I have cat-like moves all the time. You don't hear me coming in the house. I can like sneak up on you. Mm, okay. True. Right. Okay. And all of a sudden, there I am, and she's like, "Where'd you come from?" Poof. And then he's like, "Wow." <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right for the rapture news here. Get rapture ready with your favorite host today, Pastor Gary and Pastor Alex Norton, as they come to you with information that you need to make it through the times coming ahead and more. All right, on uh, Rapture News, we've got an interesting story that popped up uh, this week. Uh, Fox News is promoting divination. Um, the Christian Post reports, a former psychic who repented of occult practices after turning to Jesus Christ warned that Fox News potentially opened their viewers to demonic activity by airing an act of divination during primetime last week. Uh, she says that her name is Jen Nizza. Yes, she's uh, on TikTok. Yeah, she said the deception of putting something that seems good out there while pushing a de- demonic agenda is heartbreaking. Uh, she was watching it unfold. Uh, Niz is an author and podcaster who runs xpsychicsave.com and has written about how dabbling with tarot cards as a younger teenager ultimately led her deeply into occultism. Says she found it completely alarming when Fox News host Jesse Waters invited a medium on his show last week to discern the country's political future using tarot cards. Oh, my gosh. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, dumb, dumb. Uh, yeah, it's not very good. Uh, based on her own experience as a former medium, Nizza explained that the cardboard and pictures of the tarot do not offer any insight by themselves, but that the purported information psychics obtain from them is channeled and inherently demonic. A tool of divination is one that's actually assessing 
the demonic realm, the spirit realm, and you're going against God's will of boundaries. God says not to, she said, citing Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 through 12, which prohibits witchcraft and divination as detestable acts that incur God's judgment on nations. Uh, and broadcasting such a practice during prime time, she said, Fox News risk piquing the curiosity of their viewers to dabble in such things, effectively encouraging people to enter into a demonic communication, going against God, going to divi divination psychics and the tarot cards, try to gain some sort of future information. But really, you're talking to demons. Um, yep. Nisa, Nisa, Nisa. I don't know yeah. how you say your last Nisa. name. Nisa. Nisa said uh, demons can hook tarot practitioners in by offering a couple pieces of accurate information. But she noted that they do not have the omniscience of God and that they merely possess the knowledge of intelligent, powerful, and old beings who have been observing human affairs for a long time. Niz also maintained that the lighthearted tone of Jesse Waters' segment implied that such practices need not be taken seriously, which she warned is also potentially dangerous. Those who think divination and, and uh, other occult practices are a form of entertainment are being deceived by what she described as smoke and mirrors. Mm -hmm. That's very interesting. I watched the segment on Jesse Waters, and he was doing it sort of like a joke kind of thing, like, you know, tell us what's going to happen in the future with the elections. Yeah. Is Trump going to win office and all this other stuff? And the sad part is the lady's like, Trump's not winning. That's what she said on the show. So, oh, man. So, if, you know, that's the bad downside. But, yeah, it's not entertainment. It's real. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of stuff is real. Um, you know, unfortunately, I've known... Uh, people that uh, purchase those cards and things yep. it's just like a family fun game around so the table. this this lady that has been um saved and brought out of this <clears throat> occult yeah she um speaks every day she goes live on tiktok and stuff and talks about her story and and talks about this kind of stuff um what's happening in the world and she's she's very educated but she's very clear that it is demonic yeah. that it is not anything that even if you're hearing that you know your grandpa is here and saying something good and things like that that it is that is not it she said it is all demonic right yeah and people think that this is a good thing to do right to to bring this up and to sit and have these cards and let the cards tell them their future know, their future and everything else and uh it's very very dangerous well and this the part that kind of scares me is that you don't have to be of a certain age to buy them because no. they sell tarot card packages at like marshall's it, Target, they sell them at walmart walmart yep. yeah and they're 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 sort of like a novelty item and in fact at walmart i was really disturbed the other day i brought it up to you um it's been a couple months i said they have a coloring book oh tarot cards yeah that was <clears throat> yeah, yeah i was really shocked like it was it wasn't an adult it was not for adults right it was geared for children because i know that there is adult coloring right but this is this was not geared for adults it was geared for children well and and uh what was the other thing too is that we saw a pack of tarot cards for kids so you know sometimes you look at the tarot cards they look a little scary like there's yeah. weird stuff so they made a kid's version of it so it's not so bad but it's oh yeah they the have all thing. sorts yeah. of versions of them though there's lots of versions. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, probably the word of caution for today in this Raptor Radio News is that, you know, it's not a joke to play with this stuff. Right? Here's another word of caution. Yeah. Angel cards. Yeah, that's basically the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically the same thing. Just make it look like it's it's positive. Based, yeah. yeah. And it's not. Um, if you definitely want to read Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 through 12, it, it specifically says it in there. Now, some people say, well, that's Old Testament. That's not New Testament. Um, I don't think Jesus ever had a <clears throat> part of his Sermon on the Mount said, you know, all that stuff about the you know tarot cards and trying to understand future, divine future, uh, that's, that's okay now, you know. I'm making it okay. He never did. He still mm -hmm. talked a lot about divination as being a problem. And uh, we've seen the apostles many times have to um, cast demons out of people that were part of divination. Yep. Um, and Paul actually had an instance where he uh, cast out a demon, a woman who was a, a person who would uh, tell people's future. Um, and uh, she was set free and she got saved, you know, but it's not good. You know, the other day we were driving <clears throat> uh, to work and I saw a sign that said, pray to mother nature. Oh, yeah. For snow. Yeah, I remember seeing that, yeah. Yeah. It says it right on their sign of their business. Pray to Mother Nature for snow. And I'm like, really? They really put that on their sign? Yeah, you, you hope at one point they're just joking, you know, but... Right, but it is disturbing. Yeah. Because it's disturbing. Like, that's not who we pray to. That's not even... Right. It's awful. Yeah, and we are definitely in a culture now where this kind of stuff is being made to sound like it's, it's just like playing Skippo or... You know, Especially whatever. with everything going on in the world, um, 
with oh my gosh, I had such a bad experience with Christianity or Catholicism, right. and now with the whole thing in the Middle East, it's like any reason to just like give a hand gesture uh, to yeah. that faith and the people who believe in that faith to yeah. God Himself. Pretty, yeah, to yeah. God Himself. Yeah, like yeah, we'll find something else to do. Uh, and you know, definitely one of the things the devil does well is he tries to really cater to the flesh, anything to get you enticed and into it. Um, and so. You know, he'll mirror and act like things are, you know, so empowered, so, so much more. And really what you're doing is just falling into the trap. It's like oh, yeah. a frog in boiling water, oh, you yeah. know. I've seen so many podcasts and listened to so many podcasts and seen so many clips from podcasts of people being so empowered, quote unquote. Yeah. Um, empowered uh, by their lustful desires. Yeah. Like they're proud of it. And it's just like, uh-huh. are you kidding me? Yeah. It's insane. They're open about it. Like yeah. They're oh, they're like so open about it. They'll go into detail over on TikTok, Instagram, whatever. They don't care. Yeah. They don't care. It's like, yeah, this is what I did with my partner and this and this and this. They don't go into explicit detail. All right. But details where it's like, okay, I get it. You don't have to keep talking. Right, yeah. And but, with this kind of stuff, they say, you know, to make it better, they say, um, well, I don't practice in the dark stuff. I, I, I practice the light stuff. Yeah. That's like it's saying so it doesn't. It's so ridiculous. It's like saying it doesn't count because I have my socks on. Yeah, yeah, and this this lady, yeah. this this woman that <laughs> what? that right. should go on the quote part. Yeah. <laughs> this woman that's saved, yeah. she says it is all dark, it's all demonic. Yeah, you know, and that's what is true, and so that's yeah. just a lie. There's nothing it's just light a about tool it. Of the devil to be saying that kind of thing, you know that. People just believe that that if you practice in the light, it's fine. But yeah. if you yeah. practice dark magic, it's it's really evil. No, there's, it's there's all evil. Nothing light about it at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm only it's only light because gathering the earth's energy and focusing on that and this and this. Yeah, but there again, yeah. that's the dark side. Yeah. It's yeah. not the light side, and they think they're practicing in light. This is the thing. It is all bad. It's, it's all like demonic. that dagger's edge ever all yeah. over again. Yeah. And you are not supposed to be dabbling in any of that stuff. It is. Yeah, it's not it good. It is yeah. bad. Because it'll start moving in the wrong direction very quickly. Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, they're playing hockey with a warped puck. Yeah. Well, that's that's another quote that should be on the another list. Another one. I mean, that that goes to, that we're goes making to, them here. That uh, quote is, oh my gosh, what's the word? Head scratcher. No. 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 It could be. Um, accredited to Vicki Lawrence from the Carol Burnett show. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yes. She said that in one of the bloopers. I was like, oh my gosh. You have splinters in the windmill of your mind. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I know. That's another good quote. I know. Yeah, yeah I like that one. Okay. Now let's take a night break. We'll come back with Harbor Light Bible Trivia. Whee! More podcasts where curiosity meets insight. Tune in, delve deeper, and discover more. All right, Bubble Trivia. Here we are. Uh, we have we have the we have the answer from last week's question. Yes. Uh, Pastor Gary was talking about branches and vines and and what do we do? Yeah, or what does Jesus do with it? What does he do with the branches yeah. that are not supposed bearing to be fruit? Uh, yeah, they're not bearing fruit. And the answer was they are cut off and thrown into the fire. Thrown into the fire. Yeah. So that was burn the answer. It. Burn it. Yeah. So that's what happens there. Um, so that's the answer to that one. Um, but if you want to be a part of this week's Harbor Light Bible Trivia, all you have to do is uh, send an email of your answer to Harbor Light Bible Trivia at gmail.com, all lowercase. Harbor Light Bible Trivia at gmail.com. Who won this one? A lot of people. We don't see. We, oh, you don't say it. We changed the format because we were running out of prizes. Right. So then we're just it's doing a, a prize. At, the big prize is the prize. At the end of the month right. or and what? Yeah. Like, when and do so, they get yeah, at the end of the month. And so everybody that sends in their answer gets put into the hat the so magic what's the hat. prize right now a lot of things a crisp high five it could be a lot of things we're still <laughs> shopping at the five. dollar store and in goodwill to find that special gift for somebody no we've got uh, the crispest stuff. and most highest of fives <laughs> yeah right uh no we do have uh new podcast t-shirts coming oh and so they will be here soon I do just, they have your faces on them yes and we're just getting the sweatshop moving. I did not approve of my face. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to do a special mic run. Yeah. Yeah. Whee! yeah. Yep. Good luck getting me to run. <laughs> we'll put his face on the side of the circle. Here's Mike. Oh, on the outside idea. looking in. All the other hosts that come on, we should put like their faces outside the circle. Mm-hmm. That's a good idea. That's a brilliant idea, Alex. Why didn't you think of that sooner? Because uh, it was just about your face. <laughs> well, 
you know, it's we're the any, founders of the it's show. It's not in yeah. your time. Yeah. It's in God's time. That's right. Everyone wants your mug on them. Eh. I think right? so. Yeah. Eh. Walking around with my face on there. <laughs> on their abs. <laughs> My face looks a little bit bigger on there than when they do that. Yeah. My Some face looks stretched out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the question for this week? Today's question is, who weren't Pilati? Pilati? Oh, Pilate. <laughs> My bad. Pilate. Wait. Let's start. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> because everyone is now confused. Here, first of all, I just want to say, <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> yeah. We're doing Pilates over stretching here. stretching it. Did you know Sarah? <laughs> Sarah. C E R. It will never die. Pilates. Poop on a cracker. Never. This is the new. <laughs> we should do an Easter play. And here comes Pilate. Pilate. Oh, and here comes Pilate there, eh? Look at him being all important, buddy. Okay. That's a good voice. Oh, my gosh. What? The narrator should be Canadian. Yeah. It's so apologetic. Hey, I'm sorry there, Jesus, bud, but uh, you're going to have to get up on that cross theory. <laughs> You betcha. Oh, sorry, bud. <laughs> you betcha. The Bible, according to you, purse. Oh, jeez, Louise. This is going to be a long day. <laughs> but anyway, the question is, who warned Pilate not con- not to condemn Jesus to death? Oh, that is a good one. That is a good one. It's a good one. Pilate and his wife. <laughs> I thought it's it was like Balake. Balake. And no Balake hints. Pilate. No hints. No hints? It was someone that Pilate knew. <laughs> Pilot, That's not did a hint. He knew know? a lot of people. Did you know Pilot? No? Can't say anything. No. No. It's killing you. Oh my gosh. All right. Let's take it's an idea break me. and come back with Bible talk. <laughs> Woo! Wait, you just jumped into a whole hornet's nest of awesomeness. I'm just saying right now. You better get yourself ready because we got more stuff for you on the more podcast. Louise! Louise! Come on! over here because we're getting ready for the more podcast all right so looking at uh last week with pastor gary uh john 17 verses one through six pastor gary he shared with us in this message about uh this chapter actually being really the lord's prayer uh where in Matthew chapter six, uh, Jesus is giving his disciples a pattern and an outline to pray for them. In John 17, we actually get a very intimate look into the heart of Jesus as he is praying uh, for his coming crucifixion and resurrection, making this truly the Lord's prayer. And uh, although, you know, Pastor Gary brought up, we talked uh, uh, last week in the message that Jesus has prayed before. Uh, this is probably one of the longest prayers uh, by Jesus, and it is also one of the uh, most, I think, heartfelt as far as understanding who he is and what he's doing, because it's broken down in three sections. We have Jesus praying for himself and what was coming, which is really just a small part of the prayer. Mm-hmm. Right. It's only six verses, or five verses, and then we get into the prayer for the disciples, which is a lot longer, and then for the church, so you can really see where Jesus' heart is. He wants to uh, you know, accomplish what he has done and acknowledge the fact that he's, he's there, but also his, his heart was to see the church um, succeed, and for us to succeed as believers and his disciples to do what they needed to do. So uh, Jesus was always, if you want to think about it that way, was always concerned about us more so than anything else. Right. They just get into the cross, and that's one of the things you get from that. It's just so neat. Um, so I thought we'd just look at these verses that Pastor Gary brought up and uh, kind of talk about them a little bit. And uh, I've got my uh, school of theology here with me, uh, Pastor Amy and um, Mike. Pastor Amy. And that one other bald dude. And Mike. I don't know why he's laughing. No, I'm not. I'm not laughing. I'm just happy. He doesn't know how are... to address me as other than Mike. Mike. I'm just happy you guys are in the studio with me to uh, to talk about this. You said our school of theology. Yeah. Mike comes up with some real zingers every now and then. I know. Every now and then. Yeah. Yeah. Only when the Holy Spirit moves. That's right. All right. So uh, the first verse that we see in the text, it says, after saying all these things, Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son so he can give glory back to you. Um, it's interesting the posture that Jesus takes in the situation where he is with his disciples, because we know that from the previous chapter. And he decides at this point to look up to heaven and kind of have a conversation directly with the father in, in a sense. Uh but he really kind of establishes his purpose and meaning for why he came, which was what? To ultimately glorify the Father, yeah, yeah. The, the plan. Um, 
do you, I mean, would it have been different if Jesus was on his knees praying that prayer? I mean, why do you think he had to stand there and do that? Was there, what do you think might be the reason? For why he had to do what? Stand instead of kneel. Oh, well, he was teaching. Yeah. No, was he teaching? Well, he was walking with them. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, sorry. I completely blank. I thought he was in the Olive Garden. Yeah. Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> the Garden of Olives. Can I get my breadsticks already, please? Can I? Hey, yo, not enough Parmesan cheese on this Caesar salad. <laughs> just keep it going with the Parmesan, people. Not you enough. <laughs> Goodness gracious. This is, <laughs> this is the other Bible. All right, I'm not, I'm not looking at you anymore. You I'm going back to my LeVar Burton. <laughs> Jesus was in the Olive Garden. You know what? Hey, they treat that, you like family in there. <laughs> <laughs> that actually oh my gosh. makes so much sense what he said, but it's just funny. Yeah. That is some good stuff there. <laughs> I'm not sure if you're being sarcastic. No, she is. <laughs> I'm being real. No, she is being sarcastic. <laughs> the Olive Garden. Okay. He was over there in the Olive Garden. Where everybody treats you like family there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and everybody knows your name. Where hey, Pilate move. was. <laughs> Pilate showed up. Pilate yeah, showed up at the Olive Garden with... <laughs> <laughs> the Bible according to Mike. Mike. And again, he, and again, he is single. He is single, ladies. Single. Just say no. Indeed. Okay, so he probably, well, he was teaching it because they asked him how they should pray. Right. And so he wasn't like. So it was a question why, why he was standing instead of kneeling? Yeah, I was just wondering, like, what? This is an interesting posture. Like, you normally when you pray, what do you do? You kneel or. But right. I feel like because yeah. he was and teaching. In, and that. Well, that's that's true, but wouldn't you want to be teaching? But wouldn't Jesus teach by example? Oh, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's an offer of supplication uh, from a child to the father, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I would say that he, normally he would be, but perhaps I don't know. That's an excellent. That's a good question. I never question. thought about I, it. It doesn't really tell us in the text. I just thought it was interesting to bring up. Yeah. Uh, in what way would Jesus be glorified? What is he saying about being glorified? What is that all about? That Jesus would be glorified. Yeah. Okay. Is there a possibility, which I'm just going to throw this out there, that he was talking about his death and resurrection? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, for sure. So, I mean, you know, it's not really a possibility. Well, yeah, we know that uh, he's doing it. So he's definitely praying that, in the Olive Garden. Well, can you <laughs> can you imagine, though, as he's getting ready to do this? Chopping uh, out a breadstick. He's, <laughs> he's going to be going through a lot, right? And so he's praying, you know, as, you know, this dual nature that uh, Pastor Gary brought up is uh, human and divine. Uh, help me follow through with it. Uh -huh. You know, help me follow through that I can glorify right. the plan and purpose. Um, it's, uh, it would be probably one of the hardest things that anybody could ever do. And obviously I don't think a lot of us would want to do it, but he did. And uh, he goes to the cross and uh, it, it, he's preparing himself for that opportunity. But like I said earlier, he only gives himself like five verses. It's a real short aspect of the prayer. Right. So I think he's he's obviously really committed to it. He's not going to change his mind, but God, help me be, help me finish right. Help me finish good. That's you know? interesting. The way that you phrase that, uh, I'm sure that it may, may have been a misspeak, but I don't know. Maybe there's something there. But uh, you said get him, getting him prepared for this opportunity. Yeah. An opportunity to glorify God and to, yeah. you know, and like, hey, say, hey, this is what, as as Jesus is a son of God and we are also children of God, this is what we're supposed to do with our, for our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. Yeah. Right? Sacrifice. You, like, I would die for you guys. Yeah. Because I'm sure that you would yeah. die for me, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, of I mean, course. I mean, so, I mean, I think it's yeah. interesting that you said opportunity to show. I don't know. Maybe I'm just going off the rails a little bit. Don't you think the opportunity, though, was partially because um, he is man? Yeah. He was 100% man. Yeah. But he's 100% God, God. Right? Yeah. So, um, there could have been a no in there. True. He, he might, you know, not that he would have done this i mean he's god yeah. but there's no, still I mean, the man aspect of things yeah he's but i mean it, that also go that also goes back to like he could have said yeah sure let me uh turn this stone into a piece of bread when he was right. out in the desert right he could have said like yeah i'm hungry let's, let's eat this mm -hmm. i think yeah i think the the question was posed and it maybe in his own thinking that you know that's a possibility so he's getting he's wants that erratic he doesn't want anything stepping in and and robbing the situation of what it was intended to do He's mm -hmm. like, I yeah. want to do this. For right. Me. Yeah. I want to. Mm -hmm. It's almost well, like we get a little suck? look in his thinking. Yeah. Will it suck? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be totally righteous, dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And by righteous, I mean like, you know. God righteous. Yeah. 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 I think it. Yeah. Def <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I said it really weird, but I meant. In a, in you a you meant the real, real yeah. righteous. The yeah. real righteous. Yeah. Way. 
Uh, okay, verse two says, for you have given him authority over everyone. He's uh, He gives eternal life to each one you have given him. Um, well, I mean, it's pretty obvious that Jesus already had authority, right? From the very beginning, well, I mean, before time, he's mm-hmm. God. In the beginning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he already had authority. Um, but what do you? why do you think this concept of authority was in the prayer? Like what it could be the concern is he's getting ready to move forward as God. During the um, three days, he spent those three days in hell, right? Assumption, yes. Assumption, yeah. yeah. Maybe he was asserting that authority into power and into being for allegedly that standoff with the devil. Right. Possibly. Yeah, could be. Um, it, I mean, it could also mean, you know, I, I think of it this way. When you have power, you know, to do whatever you want, you have a real heavy choice, right? To either let power do something productive and positive or it becomes a corrupting factor, right? You've heard yeah. the expression, power corrupts. Words are power. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, once you get a hold of this power, you know, it could affect. And so he's kind of dealing with that aspect of his human nature. Like, uh, I know who I am. I know what I can do. So I really, it's almost like he's saying, I don't want anything within my, my being God to stand in there and say, well, you know what? I don't necessarily think I need it down the cross. I mean, I could do something else. You yeah. know, he's kind of like, no, I have the power to do whatever I want, but I'm choosing to move forward. Uh-huh. Uh, right. And I have that authority. And he's acknowledging the fact that he does have the authority to do whatever he wants, uh-huh. but he's still choosing to glorify the father in the situation and right. to follow through with it. Okay. Um, and then also Christ mentions in here that uh, he's the only channel that eternal life is given. Um, and so again, establishing the fact that if he doesn't do this, this idea of eternal life doesn't exist for us. And he's like, I have to do this. I have to make this happen. If we don't, we're in trouble. And it, I think by him acknowledging the fact is that again, talking about what we said earlier, we have to, he's making that commitment. Like I'm, I'm going through with this because these are the things that are are on the line for everyone. If I don't do this the way it should be done, the way God wants me to to glorify him in the situation, then it's not going to happen the way it should either, which is right. if I don't die on the cross the way I'm supposed to, if I don't um, go through with dying on the cross and eternal life doesn't exist, people's sins are not covered. Mm-hmm. And it's this personal conversation. I think this is why it's so it's such an intimate prayer of Jesus because you get to see him grappling in a sense. The vulnerability. Yeah, the vulnerability and all that being stuff. Being human, the weight of responsibility. Yeah. As well as the love that he has for us. Right. He's going through all, all that, that. Right, in that moment. And I, and it's interesting because the disciples are listening to all this, you know, and I think that's something they needed to hear that, you know, it wasn't just uh, like he's going to do something really, uh, you know, godlike at some point and he's going to pull the rug out from underneath him and go, hey, I really didn't have to, I really didn't go through anything. It's not a big deal. Uh, right. he's, he's expressing that this is, this is a lot of stuff it's going on. a big on. deal. This is a big deal what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, definitely. I can't Uh, remember where it says last night in my uh, Wednesday night live class, because we're a day later this week, but on podcast, um, Dylan brought up a really good point on, uh, because I'm taking the class on uh, healing herbs and uh, it's very interesting that are in the Bible. And he brought up, I can't remember because I don't have my notes with me, but um, he brought up a chapter out of Isaiah where it talks about um, um, it's the prophecy where he um, is going to the cross. Isaiah 53. Yeah. 53 it is. Yeah. And um, so hang on a second. Let me just get that because it sounds better when I'm not like, is it 53 like seven or something? Sure. Six. I haven't, mm. I haven't memorized in my mind there. Oh, you don't? It's been a long time since I've no. seen that version. I'm not a walking Google, Amy. Oh. He's not a walking blue letter Bible, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I feel like he is. He's helpful like that. Um, <laughs> so anyway, what it says, because I'm not seeing it right off the bat here, but, um, oh wait, maybe, maybe there it is. Um, anyway, it talks about how he goes to the cross and, or how he's going to go to the cross because this is in Isaiah, yeah. but, um, how he's going to go to the cross and he's taking on the sin of the world and all of that, but that he also takes that on so that we can heal. So yeah. that we can be healed. Yeah. And I thought that was so interesting. I've never really caught that portion of it before. And um, I just, I like that aspect of it, that we can heal and we can be healers to others just because of what he did on the cross for us. That yeah. was on his mind. Well, Matthew 8, yeah, it talks about by his stripes we are healed. Yes. Yeah, and it's not just but sin healing, but yeah, yeah it's uh, sure. healing for uh, physical bodies as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so then also in verse three, we get to, and this is the way to ter- to have eternal life, to know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, the one you sent to earth. Um, and, you know, basically Jesus is establishing the 
the pattern for us to uh, have what he's going to the cross for, what he's going to be sacrificing for, uh, for eternal life. And, and we have to uh, know him. We can't know anybody else. It's only through Jesus Christ. And he's establishing that here in his prayer. He's basically letting us know before we know this is what needs to happen. Yeah. There's nothing else there. Um, and so if we believe in him, we will have eternal life. But, you know, the thing is, it's not just to believe that Jesus exists because, I mean, the, the Bible says even in James that even the demons believe and tremble, but knowing him in a relationship, just as Jesus is being the example right now, as he's showing you in verses 1 through 5, yeah. uh, John 17, um, knowing is so much deeper than that. Uh-huh. You know, knowing is not only accepting the fact of God's relationship and what he's offered us, but knowing him and the fact that we submit ourselves to him, we become just like Jesus is showing us here. We become, um, uh, we become servant, we a servant to what Jesus needed uh, to do. We do that for him. And I think that's uh, an interesting thing that it brings up here when he talks about this internal life. Um, and that's what he wants us to truly know is the way that him and the father had this relationship. That's what we need uh-huh. to have uh, with Jesus Christ. Right. Then we get to verse four and it says, I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave to me. Um, so, you know, Jesus' earthly life was, you know, it was driven by the desire to obey God's will and glorify him in all that he did. But at the end of his life, you know, he kind of is doing a victory lap here. He did what he needed to do. Yeah, he can report to all of heaven that everything that you gave me to do, I accomplished it. There's nothing that is missing. And it's what we see later on when the apostles talk about complete perfection of what he did. Nothing was missing. He didn't like skip a beat and say, well, I don't need to do that part because I'm going to do this later. You know, he followed everything in order. And uh, it should be assurance to us, I think, as believers that, um, you know, Christ made sure every dot was made every t was crossed nothing was left you know undone before he said okay and i'm done yep you know yep. and uh, i think that's just a really cool thing because when we say okay god i believe in you through jesus um we're believing in a jesus who um is not hiding anything from us there's not like any extras that we don't know about you don't need a promo code to be in that, you know in this <laughs> idea of who jesus is it is what it is right. and uh so as we believe in that and get to know him uh, it's just a really awesome experience. Verse five says, now, Father, bring me into the glory that we shared before the world began. Uh, from Philippians two, we know that Jesus gave up his glory as God when he came to the world. But here he asked to, um, in a sense, have it again, to, to be established where he was before. So is that existing. why he's called the great redeemer? Oh, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. I, I, I was like, so he redeemed his own what was glory, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, he was given back. What he gave up himself, right. right? He gave that, willingly gave it up in Philippians 2. And yeah. then now he's receiving it back. And in this prayer, he's saying, okay. So I'm redeemed. So yeah, we're moving forward I, on this. Yeah. I think it's a really yeah. uh, cool way of looking at that. But um, it's not to take away from his dual nature as who he is. Right. Uh, he's still always God and still always man uh, in this situation. But um, he is saying, I'm ready. I'm ready to go back and be the God that I've always been and uh, and to start working towards bringing my people home. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, well, you know, we didn't have Pastor Gary here to give us all of his uh, insights and notes in this, but this is uh, just kind of a quick overview of the passage. I think uh, uh, he's going to be talking next week on Sunday. He's going to be talking about uh, John 6 through 19, uh, the disciples' prayer, and uh, getting into that a little more deeply, but uh, hopefully we'll have him back in the studio. Uh, as we get ready to close, keep praying for him. You know, he had uh, a little, what would we call it, a Pick little up. scare with his heart. Yeah. yeah. So he was uh, taken to the hospital to get assessed and stuff like that. But he's he's on the men's. He just needs some rest. And, and I know Lisa Kay is making sure that he gets his rest. Because if you know anything about Pastor Gary, he doesn't ever sit down. Never. And so I'm sure she's probably duct taping. Unless he's him. welding yeah. something. Yeah, right. <laughs> so there's a lot of duct tape involved to keep him sitting down. So he's always moving around. But we're going to be happy to have him back. And he's looking forward to preaching on Sunday. Just uh, It's his own victory lap, you know? Yeah. Yep. He's making it. He's fine. Yes, sir. Well, we'll see you next week for the podcast. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Ciao for now. Yeah, Thanks ciao for, for now. Us. We'll see you at the Olive Garden. See you, <laughs> see you at the Olive Garden. Press X on me. <laughs> <laughs>